Well, let's see what we've got from here. So we can go to Venice and we can go to Vienna. When does this? This departs tomorrow. It has space for two. Uh, and then we can go possibly on from... Oh, look, look! We can go from Venice to Athens or to uh, Izmir. I imagine we could probably find somewhere that goes to um, Alexandria in Egypt as well. That'd be good. Okay. But what about Vienna? Hmm. It just strikes me that it would be more convenient and time-saving to take at least some boat trips. Not barge trips. That one was slow as fuck, but... Boat trips. Actual boat trips. But we are going to have to wait until tomorrow. As I have previously noted, the Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year previously. Thus my French accent was a disadvantage <laughs> during our short time in Munich. The concierge of our hotel was most suspicious when I approached the desk. I did not care for politics myself. What was the enmity of nations to me? Still, in order to avoid any untowardness, I spoke as little as possible, I think is the best way to do that, and tried to adopt a Germanic rather than Francophone expression to match. With perhaps mixed success, if Monsieur Fogg's faintly quizzical looks were any measure. Okay, so we have bamboozled Mr. Fogg a little bit. He's wondering why we're pulling strange expressions and not talking very much. Okay, so it's minus nine, but he's in peak condition and it's got two luggage and it's fairly cheap. So let's go! And yes, we're taking another bloody car. I want to say train because it kind of looks more like a train. You know, the really, really old trains. We hired a private driver with an oil-guzzling Bozek car who took off at high speed once we were aboard. It appeared to be reinforced with metal strips and brackets. And, the lo and looked a lot like parts broken fr uh, from broken farm equipment. The driver himself had haymaker hands that suggested he had not long ago been a labourer of the land. Good lord, no. Not that sort. Ugh. Ghastly. We rode in silence, which is the preferred fashion, and ensured our ride was incident-free, but from, th but from the spluttering and spurting of the engine as it rith exploded rhythmically behind us. Uh, let's wait and read the news, shall we? Artificer expedition rumoured for North Pole. Fascinating. Well, I don't really think we need to go to the North Pole any time, so we should be fine. By midday, we had crested the mountains and our journey down was almost steam-free. I relished the fresh air and I could see my master did as well. And then there was the Adriatic Sea, sparkling as though encrusted with jewels, though thoughts of grimy London flew from my head. This was the life. In short, the car did not explode, and we were rowed across the gulf towards the city of Canals. The lamps were just being lit, and we lost ourselves in the narrow, winding alleys, enjoying the smells of grilling fish and red wine. Oh, that does sound nice to me! And the sparkle of the glass from the shop windows. This was a pretty place we had arrived in, indeed. Ah, oh, Venice. See, these days you really wouldn't want to visit there too much, because... Uh, because everyone else is, put it that way. It's overcrowded. So what will this fetch us? Eh, a tidy sum. Carnivale mask. It is worth 4,000 in Antalaya. I, n I have no idea where that is. Yeah, a top hat, a railway cap. Sophos's shipping times. Routes for shipping around Greece and Turkey will be visible on the globe. I mean, it might be worth taking this just in case to see. Problem is, is we've gone past Berlin. I'll hold onto the wine a little longer, I think. Actually, no, fuck it. Let's get the hairbrush. Might be useful for uh, whenever Fog gets a little bit antsy and needs his hair combing <laughs> like a little girl. <laughs> that mask is truly horrifying. Please put it away. All right. Well, I wasn't suggesting you wear it. Good Lord. So, let's have a look. What we got here? What are we looking at? We can go all the way to Athens, which arrives Sunday and departs in three... No, it arrives in three days. And we can negotiate. Oh! 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 That, that stings! Oh! That's a lot. 
He's not going to be happy with the trip at all either. Mm. Unfortunately though, he might have to just endure. Anyway, let's go to Betty Byers, shall we? I was walking along a canal side in Venice when I found myself in the midst of a group of revelers. They wore a fabulous array of masks, some big-nosed, others brightly feathered, and even spun some fine glittering wire. Uh, I extricated myself from the raucous group, wondering what my master would think of the notion of a mask instead of a top hat to complement one's evening attire. The revellers continued along the canal bank, sing singing songs and drinking from open bottles of red wine. I saw one of the women slip, in, slip on the edge and fall into the water with a resounding splash. A friend seemed drunkenly unconcerned and fell about in peeling laughter as the, women c as the woman cursed and thrashed in the dark water. See, she's a Venetian woman, evidently, from her dress. So I would imagine that most Venetians, if not all of them, it would be common practice for them to learn how to swim. So I think she's, even though she's probably drunk, I'm sure she's fine. So I shook my head in despair. Would they not even try to help her? The woman seemed to be spending more energy shaking her fist and cursing than attempting to swim. I saw, I saw her swallow a good few mouthfuls of the canal water as her heavy clothes dragged down on her. See, the problem there is, is that um, the water in Venice is infamously bad. Like, really, like, nasty. Oh, do I want to jump in? Do I want to be the hero in this? Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm a gentleman. Fuck it. We're gonna go and grab her. <sighs> I jumped in, reaching her in a few strokes. Zuto law, the water was cold. She kicked and fought as I hauled her to a nearby flight of steps. Via met there is a daughter of the canal, one of her friends put in. You should have left her in it. Another drunken youth agreed. It's the only time she bathes. Fiametta coughed and choked as I hauled her from the water. I averted my eyes tactfully and for a, from her sodden clothes and was immodestly that was immodestly plastered to her skin. Who are you? she demanded, seeing, seeming to see me for the first time. Her friends made various kissing noises and suggested a variety of improbable roles for me. A clown, one said. No, no, another injected, injected. An agent of the Pope, yet another added... Sotto voce Fiametta's foreign lover, which caused all of them to laugh as Fiametta cursed them with admirable thoroughness. Oh, well, I've got to be on my way now. Job's done. I left the fools well alone. And so slipped back to Monsieur Fogg as the revellers opened another bottle of wine to appease their canal sodden friend. Your character is now zestful. What the fuck does that mean? Do I just smell of lemons? Right, should we explore, see if we can find anything different other than just the one route we've got? Oh, look at that. Oh, go to Dubrovnik and Rome. I was waiting my turn at the gondola rank near the Rialto Bridge when a gondolier from across the, wall, the, the canal waved frantically to catch my attention. Monsieur, I will take you. I recognize that voice. Mon Dieu, it was the very woman I'd pulled from the canal the night before. I waved her over. Being tired of waiting in line, she made a sharp turn through the water, earning the ire of several other boatmen who had turned to swerve her, to avoid her. Fiametta, the booking agent who ran the, the rank, shook his fist in her direction. Leave my customers alone. You deserve no customers, Zorzi, Fiametta shouted back, ignoring me entirely. Was it possible she did not remember me? Those creatures of yours are not gondoliers, they know nothing of the soul of Venice. I did not understand her meaning until I peered at one of the gondoliers in the rank. Parleur, the oarsmen's at the stern were machines of fearsome inhumanity. The faces were covered by feather feathered carnivale masks and their hands tapered into oars. Signore, my automaton gondoliers are the pride of Venice, Zorzi insisted breathlessly as he reached me. They are guaranteed, they are guaranteed safe by the Sciola, a local artificers gu uh, guild. Fiumetta here is a troublemaker. Now, we were advised that the Sciola were to be avoided when we were in Munich, so I think I'm going to go with Fiametta on this one. From the water, Fiametta called, I am a true gondolier. I nodded and stepped into Fiametta's gondolier. I like trouble, I told Zorzi with a, uh, with a shrug. Fiametta gave him a perfectly executed mocking courtesy as we pulled away. 
no mean feat whilst also holding an oar and balancing on the prow of the low craft. Zorzi supported the Risorgimento, the Italian unification, Yemete told me as she pushed us, pushed us forwards. Now he is a boot bootlicker for the Sciola and dabbles in their infernal mechanica me mecha mechanicals, mechanicals. Why do you hate automata? I asked curiously. I do not hate them. I fear them. They are soulless. The Pope has declared them abominations, and yet they roam the streets and the canals of Venice. Do continue. She took a deep breath. It is an open secret that Sciola run Italy in all but name. The king is their puppet. We are a kingdom run by artificers. Ooh, wow, that's political as fuck. Better the artificers than the Pope. Uh, I'm going to be sympathetic. It is terrible, I exclaimed. Directly influencing government was against the artificer's creed, but it seemed that the Sciola had some revolutionary ideas of its own. The gondolier slid onwards. I listened as Fiametta raged against her Sciola. <laughs> yeah, sure. The Sciola has money and power and their infernal devices. They are an impossible enemy. She gave me a sharp look before tugging a length of grey and red braid from her cap and handing it to me. What the fuck? But there are those who f who fight still. The, the the oh god, I have to pronounce this. The Ziove of Rome will never surrender to the Sciola. Ziove, Ziove. Perhaps, my friend, you are one of us. Uh. I barely knew how to respond and lapsed into silence. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not a, an activist in this role. I'm afraid I'm just a, a humble valet. I'm not actually a butler. A butler is often mistaken for a valet. What I am to Monsieur Fogg. In this scenario is what they call a valet, which is like uh, a person, a PA effectively, a personal assistant. I barely knew how to respond and lapsed into silence. We rode past palazzos and gothic churches, each more grand than the last. Fiametta gave me a potted history on Venice in her own idiosyncratic style. It was a pleasant enough way to spend an afternoon, though it was uncomfortably close to travelling. Your character is now courageous again. We're not zestful anymore, we've lost the smell of lemon in the fucking canals, I bet. Right, so, when can we depart? I do want to go to Athens, even though Phileas Fuckwit's going to be a little bit annoyed with us for doing so. Two days. Ooh, we can make it quicker. Thinks it would be thoroughly ungentleman ungentlemanly behaviour, though. That doesn't make sense. He's suggesting we persuade them to leave earlier, but then he's saying it's ungentlemanly? Mm. How about Rome? Public carriage. And again, he would... And that... That's tomorrow. Ooh. We can go to Rome, or we can go to Athens. Or we can even go to Budapest, but I'd rather not. We can go to Dubrovnik. Buy another car. All right. I don't know. We can go to Dubrovnik. We can go to Athens. And we can go to Rome. But I'm going to leave this decision to you, you lovely chaps out there. Because I feel I have played this for long enough for everyone to get an impression of what it is about. So if you enjoyed this, do let me know. And also let me know what you think should be my next destination. Dubrovnik, Athens or Rome, and I shall see you later, and thank you for watching.